you were just reconfiguring the audio system. Um, clearly quite a lot's happened. Talk us through what's been going on. Yes, well, as you say, uh, last time you were here, the aircraft was fully stripped out. Yeah. So when we just finished the survey phase of everything and we've gone through all the drawings and uh, any extra design work was being carried out, we were just about to start all the installation work. So as you can see now, it's fully rebuilt. We have completed all that. So we started off really with the audio reconfiguration side of things. So the way the aircraft was set up, we needed to move some of the audio positions around to uh, to maximize the potential of the aircraft for the air ambulance role. And that also involves some of the headspace as well, the station boxes, you'll see the audio control panels at the back. We've also changed the positions of where the uh, paramedics and the crews and passengers plug their helmets in. You might see there's drop leads here, there, currently in the crew positions. They're where the paramedics can now sit and they can transmit from their headsets, from their helmets on their hand, air ambulance radios. It was then uh, our job then to install the new, uh, these docking stations here, the cradles here, for the new handheld radios for the paramedics. So, uh, this process was probably a four weeks, it was quite a big job. There's some interface units to fit in the baggage bay to do that. So we had to configure it to the audio management system as well. One here and one in the forward stations. The portable radios fit into these stations. They provide two functions. One, they charge them in flight. And two, they allow the uh, paramedics and the crew to transmit on their radios from their seated position all around the aircraft by the PTT switches they have on their block leads as well. Well, this is the uh, bracket here for the Lucas chest compression device. So this uh, stores and secures it in place. Has been demonstrated now. So previously it was stored above our other primary bags. Um, it wasn't an ideal location for lifting in and out, so we've managed to adjust it to get it behind the seat here for better storage, but it also gives us faster access to it when we land on the scene, and it means that we can insert the utility shelf now and have somewhere to place our drug syringes in flight so that we can use them safely. We have a dual shelving unit, so these are being made slightly wider, slightly broader, so adjust them for your baggage hold in with the straps here as you can see and uh, we have a shelf here for the Hamilton unit and we also have a utility shelf here which is fully adjustable for uh, better visibility of flight or to make it more accessible for yourselves from a utility point of view. Lovely. Should we try some bags in? our main equipment base that we take to scene so the blue one carries all of our trauma dressings and our drugs and the red one is our airway kit. So every job that we go to we take these two bags um, as routine and we also take our Zol as well. Zol. Thank you. So, uh, yeah we've got a lot of a lot of air ambulance equipment as you can see now it's full we have our oxygen our MTM unit, they call it at the bottom, the oxygen the cylinders are stored in there for, so the uh, paramedics can supply oxygen to the patient if need be. Our stretcher, again with associated racking aside for more equipment to be fitted onto. We have a system of seats, so we have uh, two seats in the front there, folding seats and a rear fixed seat in the back. We have here a translated seat, so this one actually rotates so they can face forward or they can face inwards for, towards the patient as well. Uh, we have a number of racks and systems in place as well at the front here. So we have storage seats at the front and shelves at the front as well. Again, for more baggage, more storage, more equipment to be uh, stored upon. And we also rails above us as well. We have uh, rails above so they can hang equipment from as well. And also at the back of the aircraft, we have a rail at the back as well for even more equipment to be uh, stored if need be. So uh, plenty of storage space. So essentially we've looked at our original aircraft, looked at how we stow the, the bags and the kit and all our ancillary equipment and we've made subtle changes in order to enhance the ergonomics of the aircraft, the way that we can work and the way we access all the kit and the bags to make our own lives a little bit easier and to speed up the patient care both to scene and from scene and whilst in flight. We need rapid access to our kit. What we've learned from the new aircraft is that we could make subtle changes to the interior design to make our lives a bit easier and be able to access the um, equipment more easily and be able to see the monitoring more easily from our seats. It's been a case of bringing all of our spare equipment up with us um, and trying it for size in the racking because it's 
never been tried yet to date in this aircraft um, and it's a case of testing out the intercom systems we've got our helmets with us we'll plug the power into the aircraft in a moment we'll have a chat with our control desks through the intercoms to make sure the radio systems work properly and we'll speak to ourselves as if we're discussing a job with a crew on the ground for example mm -hmm. so once we're happy with all the equipment the next step is we bring our new aw169 back home to cornwall so yeah it's been an absolute pleasure to be involved in you know, this air ambulance now is going to go into operation it will double the fleet in Cornwall, so you're now going up to two aircraft, and uh, yeah, to be a small part of that now, too, yeah, it's just it's been a real pleasure. It's been a real privilege.